I am going to answer a question which uh, has been uh, asked uh, many times before and will continue to be asked is uh, is the market going to come down now now this is a question which is very loaded remember we are asking very many questions we are asking the first question is the market overvalued now will the market uh, stay there or will it come down and is the market going to crash the question is uh, is the market going to crash now which means uh, today say uh, on uh, monday uh, you know on uh, the last day of august 31st august which is a monday is the market going to crash so many questions to be answered now the uh, general way of judging whether the market is up or down is to look at a number called the pe ratio pe ratio as the name itself suggests is a ratio between the price and the uh, price in the of a share and the earning that it delivers because ultimately when you buy an uh, equity share you are buying it for the earnings so if you go 50 years back uh, the more important ratio was pd ratio price to dividend ratio because the only thing which a retail guy actually controlled was the dividend that's the only thing which you saw nothing else uh, earning didn't matter if the company could earn 100 rupees and keep all the 100 to itself or it could earn 100 rupees and uh, give you 10 rupees Bo anything was possible so take a company like berkshire hathaway the word pe doesn't make uh, any uh, sense because you don't control any of that you are just hoping that uh, mr buffett will keep on investing the money better and better because he does not pay dividend he does not do splits right so pe is a number which you see now pe is again very funny you see pe of a particular company so you take a larsen and tobro seeds pe you take a hgfc bank seeds pe you take a reliance and seeds pe you take an apollo hospital and seeds pe that's great now when you put all of them in a group and that group is called the index then you come to some funny animal called the average pe now the average pe is like uh, walking into a room and saying the average blood pressure in this room is uh, so and so or let's say the average net worth in this com in this room is uh, 1 million dollars now it does not mean anything it does not capture anything of the individuals there now if suppose there is uh, bill gates sitting in that room and all the others have a net worth which is less than 100000 dollars the average net worth will be high now if uh, Bill Gates were to walk out of that room, the average net worth in that room would fall. Secondly, average net worth is of no use to me when I have to deal with each individual. So when I call one guy and say, okay, I think uh, you should put $100,000 in bonds, $100,000 in uh, equity and uh, he says, hey, hold on, wait a minute, my net worth is uh, $32,000. He said, no, but the average net worth in that room was $1 million. He says, oh, that's because Bill Gates was sitting in that room. So the average does not matter so average pe of the index is a number which is nice to look at for comparing history and say oh we have reached an all time high we are now at 32 we are now at 33 or whatever you want to do but it is of completely no use to the individual wanting to invest because you are not investing in the index you are largely investing in a portfolio or you are investing in an individual share so yes, getting into a reliance and saying, oh, the PE is very high, so reliance should not be bought or getting into HGFC bank and saying the PE is very high, so it should not be bought is completely different. And I don't agree that you should look at PE. That's a completely different matter. But looking at the collective PE makes no sense because uh, funnily now they calculate the PE of a company which is in the negative also. So if uh, Tata Motors makes a loss and it has a PE of minus uh, 32, and uh, there is HDFC bank which is a PE of 30. Uh, does it mean on an average if I buy HDFC bank and Tata uh, Motors, my portfolio would be at uh, PE of 0? No, it makes no sense. Don't look at this collective PE. Uh, it does not make any sense. More importantly, one more thing is PE is a very good indicator, but you should not use such indicators in a year when the markets are definitely going to be in a turmoil and will have uh, lower earnings. So every company is likely to report bad to very bad kind of uh, earning because 
like a pharma company told me there is no worker with whom we can manufacture there is no transport there is no doctor writing prescription chemists are hard up for money hospitals have to get money from municipal uh, municipal authorities they have no hopes of getting this money before 2024 so with given these circumstances chances are pharma companies are also going to produce poor results pharma companies exporting to us are also going to produce bad results so where is the question of the market uh, doing well because of the current year working no people market is definitely buying the 2022 earning or the market is saying there will be reversion to mean again reversion to mean is a word which fund managers love to use in years when their performance is bad so i am not saying you should get carried away either by the pe ratio or reversion to the mean if you think there is a good company which is doing well which is likely to build up market share etc then just go and buy don't be swayed by the pe the pe will be bad for next 8 uh, 9 months for sure don't let pe swing you this is a good time when you should be using pb market share uh, roc ronw look at all that and if you think those are also not good indicators you may not be very wrong because with the current working uh, all the ratios would also be sub, uh, pretty uh, subdued so if you you will find uh, find an indigo with definitely very subdued uh, return ratios uh, be- simply because the current year profitability is bad but if you think next year profitability will be good maybe it's a time for you to buy do you think hdfc bank is overpriced uh, then you should not be buying and if those for those people who think the whole market is overpriced or some particular shares are overpriced they should just go and uh, short the market uh, put options are available for those people who are pessimistic about what is going to happen so if you are sure that reliance is overpriced and the price should go down maybe you should just go and short reliance or you should short hdfc limited or hdfc bank those shares which you think are overpriced you should go and short it if you are optimistic you should go and buy it so you decide whether you want to be optimistic or pessimistic uh, the market provides a opportunity for both of us for the uh, people who are optimistic and the people who are uh, pessimistic people who are pessimistic should just go and sell people who are optimistic should go and buy is it good time to be buying is it a good time to be selling i am not getting into any of those things i am just saying do not use collective pe do not use pe at all during times when you know that the earning is not indicative of what happened in the past year or what is going to happen in the next year this is an outlier just like how you will calculate the uh, average net worth of a room without the net worth of mr bill gates is how you should be calc- looking at the pe looking at the pe of the current year makes no sense when you know that uh, the earnings are subdued